Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about the youth in Canada and so I was like talking to somebody today and there was a sister, she's 15 um, and she wants to get married mm. and she found a brother, everything appears to be good, is practicing brother, seeking knowledge. Mm-hmm. has the intention to go to uh, a Muslim country to seek no- further his knowledge yeah. and uh, eventually want to make hijrah bin ta'ala. So it's kind of like everything that me with, uh, as a guy with daughters, I would want a guy like that for my own daughter. But I'm trying to think like if my daughter came to me you know, with that kind of a guy, I'd be like, okay, alhamdulillah, let's, let's make it work, right? Yeah. Now her family, because of her age, is kind of like putting putting obstacles for her, like making it hard for them to get married. Um, and I'm just thinking like, what are they expecting this 15 year old girl to do now mm-hmm. if, if she's not going to get married? You mentioned that uh, when you were in high school, because you were, where did you come from? Afghanistan. And you were there up until what age? 17. So 17 you came here to, you were in Surrey? I was in Kukarla, Port Kukarla. Yeah. Port Kukarla. Yeah. So you went from Afghanistan, relatively conservative, relatively like right in their values, very Muslim in nature, to Canada. Yeah, yeah, what high school did you go to here? Uh, Terry Fox. Terry Fox. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's the most Canadian name yeah. school. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. so, like, what was it like going from, you know, Afghanistan, Islamically, Islamic environment, mm. to Terry Fox Secondary? Subhanallah. It was a big culture shock for me. You know, I mean, it was, you know, the difference, subhanAllah, in every, in every single thing. And as, as men, for me, as a, as a man, at that age, was the, because there was no segregation between men and women, the boys and girls, you know, in Afghanistan we have that. You have so, segregated yeah, schools, right? Yeah. yeah, so it's very difficult to, you know, contact the sister or have access to, you know. You know uh, but here, subhanAllah, it, uh, it, it's to the point where, you know, even though you don't want it, they come to you. They come to you? They come to you, basically. There's too much pressure. You have to basically fit in. You Allah. have to talk like them Allah. and you have, if you are in that group, otherwise you are just a lonely person maybe sitting in a library in a cubicle, you know, with no talk or contact with anyone, you know? So it is, it is difficult and, and, and SubhanAllah, yani, we have so many sisters, the not sisters you mentioned, so many brothers and sisters in that situation, circumstances where parents are an obstacle, you know. That's what I'm thinking, right? Like if, if my daughter comes to me at 15, Rani, with the condition she's already balig, mm-hmm. and the brother I've checked and I have no issue with him. Yeah, Bismillah. Bismillah. Yeah. Like what am I gonna... Okay. I'm gonna be answerable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if I say no based off of culture, off of society, off of my my own uh, upbringing that is believing that a woman cannot get married until she's above 25. Like Canadian society yeah. in general has that like perspective like, oh, if you get married below 25, you're young. <laughs> you know, whereas like if you're getting married uh, after 25, mm-hmm. your biological clock is almost halfway gone already to have children and to, you know, to, to... How do we address this issue where, where the parents need to understand or the parents need to put themselves 
in their kids' shoes that it's difficult for them. If we wanted to protect them for, from, you know, um, from haram out there, which is very easy to get, you know, do we like, let's say, making dawah programs in masjid, inviting the parents to, the, uh, to those programs or halaqats in order to educate them Islamically to understand that, hey, you know, this is what it is. You might not feel it, but it's very different for 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 youth who are 15, 16, and 17 years old. I think that's what it has to like. It's it's a very yani. It's a like sensitive topic for parents mm -hmm. because how do you talk about teen sex culture with parents? Like first of all, it's already like an awkward conversation as it is, right? Like us just like mentioning the word sex is like such a difficult thing to say and we're adults, yeah, right? So like a, 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 a child, a teen trying to say that to their parents, I can understand how that is but I feel like you brought your kids here or you came here and you, you as an immigrant came here, you have to now deal with the fitna and fasad that you've presented to them. So yeah. I feel like there has to be workshops in the masajid dedicated to like the realities of high school for Muslim youth in public school. Do you think and even even if and even you know Islamic school if there if there is such uh, things going on because as, if, even if you want to protect the kids in Islamic school mm -hmm. it's a global village now the the kid doesn't necessarily need to go to public school to be exposed to the same things because he has a phone yeah that just exposes him to the same you know fitna and facade that he is supposed to be protected from in Islamic school what you were saying no like um, no but let's say those youth that do not go to this Islamic school because exactly. I said I listened to this one mother who had who has three kids and she was talking about the LGBTQ community and like their kids are like in kindergarten and grade one and two and they're already actually teaching them about you know this ideology uh, you know in that young at that young and uh, uh, <laughs> and she said that I'm really opposed to it yeah you know what should I do should I go back home should I send him to a Catholic school and she's like I cannot afford an Islamic school it's it's too much yeah mm -hmm. so do you think we as a community and the leaders of the community and the organization the Islamic organizations we have do you think they fail to kind of provide an environment for Muslim youth to be protected I definitely easy. I definitely feel like there is a failure going on yeah because in this in the same city of Surrey we have we have Christian high schools mm -hmm. we have Christian high schools Fraser Valley, Fraser Valley Christian mm -hmm. Holy Cross you could consider a Christian high school mm -hmm. a Catholic high school or whatever mm -hmm. um, you have in, in Richmond you have Richmond Christian right um, but there is not one in all of I mean in, in, in our vicinity here there's not one Muslim high school and it's like okay so you're you're saying that you are just basically teaching kids the basics of Islam teaching them math science whatever up until grade 7 mm -hmm. and then you're throwing them to to the wolves to be eaten yeah. alive by these kids that have been literally training you know in the kuffar in the, in the mushrik in the in the fitna and fasad culture of the west to now be with your kids and they're going to be your kids' friends because they're going to expose them to things that they weren't exposed to mm -hmm. and the nafs of the child and the, and the adolescent and the prepubescent teen and the mm -hmm. teen is going to be uh, gravitating towards that thing. So no matter how much of a hafiz, how much of a pious child you think you have, yani, the, the shaitan gets to us as adults and you're expecting your child to be so fortified in their deen that they're not going to be able to falter. Like I fear for it and that's why I think like yes, there's definitely a failure. And I think a lot of it has to do with just priorities of the masajid. Yeah. Like sometimes, yani, you're, you're spending, and this is not a shot to any particular masajid, but you're spending like 80,000, 100,000 dollars on sound systems so that the voice of the Qari in Tarawih is good, 
you're spending thousands of dollars on these other things but I feel like there can be a designated allotment of, of or, a pro, or, or a particular fundraising drive mm -hmm. uh, for, for a high school in Surrey or a high school in BC mm -hmm. because like Imams or ulama from, from different uh, countries, different provinces even they come here, they fundraise to build a masajid and that particular town or city that they're from already has like <laughs> hundreds of masajid mm -hmm. And they're getting, they're asking for like one, uh, we, we need, you know, two million, we need three million, we need, like, this is not small amounts of money, right? Yeah. But the same level of fundraising is not going towards the ability to establish a high school for the youth. And I think like that's, that should be the priority right now, yeah. more than ever. Yeah. If, if everybody is agreeing, and that's the thing how you mentioned, like there's no escape for the children to learn the Soji 1, 2, 3 Koga curriculum. And that's in elementary school. High school gets even worse. Wow. Subhanallah. They're teaching them that gender is a con is a social construct. Yeah. It's not something that's rooted in biology. Mm -hmm. In high school. Yes. Yeah, but that like when I was in school, we didn't touch on that until I got to university. We didn't touch that gender is a social construct until university. Yeah. Like actually, and that was back in twenties. Uh, between two to, uh, 20, 2012 to 2016, right? Like when I was at SFU. Yeah. So how are you going to now, like you, you're setting us up for failure and not only that, your priorities are wrong mm -hmm. with, the, with the youth. You're thinking that, and I have no issue with ha holding halaqat for the youth. I have no issue with holding uh, yani, like sports programs. I have no issue with, with holding all it like henna nights, whatever, whatever it is you're thinking is going to be good for the, the Muslim uh, male and female youth. Yeah. But you have to have a plan in place for the youth Monday to Friday, 8 to 3. Yeah. What is that? Like you don't have any solution for that. You're Fine. saying go to high school and use your dhikr and your salah to protect you. And that's here. In Quebec, they've banned that hijab now, and all like that's here, and uh, like it gets even worse the more the the mm -hmm. dif different places in the province you go, yeah. right? Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Edmonton, I think they have a high, Muslim high school, yeah. and in in uh, Ontario, they have a Muslim high school. We should have one here. No, no, for sure. Do you think we have? We don't have enough at the moment. I think uh, right now, a uh, few brothers I know. Um, who um, are sending their kids to Islamic schools. You know, the waiting list is too long because you have to register your kids for the age yeah. of what, two or one? <laughs> before your babies get... When, when you find out you're pregnant, that's when you need to like be yeah. like getting them on the list. There's also another dilemma with uh, maybe some of the Muslims, they do not want to send their kids to to Islamic schools and these Islamic schools or the leaders are thinking that since we do not have enough fund, enough students, then they might be thinking there's no need for high school. They might build high school but they will not have enough fund to actually operate that high school. Because like you mentioned, uh, the, the, the story of that sister, you know. If we have parents like that, I don't think parents would send their kids to, you know, Islamic schools. Really? Even though, even though there's a Islamic high school but, you know, parents will not send them because, you know, it costs money, I, you know, it's not normal because, you know, you have to basically, the school is one, it's not like in every it's not like two or three or four schools in every district, right? Mm. You know, it's it's going to be, let's say, in Richmond or Surrey or Vancouver and you're living in, let's say, Maple Ridge or <laughs> Abbotsford, yeah. for yeah. example, and that commute and energy and things like that. So, there is a brother, mashallah, may Allah bless him, Brother Amar, he's starting, a, I think you may have seen, he's starting a, a homeschooling program. Okay. So there's options 
if you can't make it to on site, right? So I think I, and he just started this. Alhamdulillah, I, I, I've heard that it's uh, because of this need. Okay. Um, that people are saying, I'm not going to put my kid in public school anymore. So what, what are my options if there's no high school? Yeah. So he's he created a curriculum, and uh, it's just it's just being launched, inshallah. So okay. Um, so that's here. That that's an option if you can't make it in school. But I, at the same time. Like I feel like the actual structure of the massages should be a way to include schools. Schools. Yeah, that would be a very good idea. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't know why. Um, like for example, Richmond Masjid, mm -hmm. they have the school at the back, right? Like they have the actual elementary school at the back. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Like that should be that should be a blueprint. For, for every, every masjid organization, every out there. organization out mm -hmm. there, when they purchase a land, a property of land, they're mm -hmm. thinking, okay, we not only need the masa the masala, the masjid, mm -hmm. but we also need the m madrasa. We also need like the actual, you know, like high school slash like elementary school for the kids, mm -hmm. so that they have, you know, like it's a one stop shop kind of a thing. Yeah. It shouldn't be the case, like, you know, where you have to. Travel so far just to do these things, and it makes it easier on the parents then too, because the same place they're coming for their daily salah, mm -hmm. they're picking up their kid from. Yeah, that's what, like if I and that's the thing. Like I've only been Muslim here for like, you guys are all experienced in this, like going through the years of being a Muslim and having yeah, yeah. these shortcomings. I was surprised that this was that that there was this much of a lack of support for the youth in in the deen that is the correct one. Yes. Yeah. Like the, the Christians, they have the support for the youth and they're upon batal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, the, obviously the atheists have the support for the youth because they have the universities that go up until whatever. Mm -hmm. and they have no issue, they have no sharia. And, you know, that there's even, uh, you know, there's Bible, there's Bible colleges here, Saskatchewan and other places, right? Like you can go to seminaries here. Mm -hmm. But I don't see that anywhere here for Muslims. And it's like, we're up on the haq, how do we not have something that is established for them? And yani, there's, there's boasting that the BCMA has been here for 50 plus years. Yeah. So what's there to show for it now? Like, if you've, if you've been here for half a century, you don't have a high school yet? I don't know. No. I don't know what else to do. Yeah. Because like, we, people have been talking about this issue mm -hmm. for a long time. I have another question. Yeah. Since we're talking about youth, a lot of parents are struggling to, uh, or struggling to have that, um, to discipline their kids. Um, they don't know how to conduct themselves with with their kids. You know the way, um, because. We're living in an environment where we're exposed to, with the youth are exposed to so many haram things. And the parents will need to find a way or be wise enough in order to have them under their wing. Like control, you know. But most of us, you know, who are recently, um, who are immigrants, and they have this back home mentality, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. How do you basically approach this issue here in the West? How how would you talk to your kids? How would you address an issue? Because most of the immigrant parents they're too shy to address some of the issues we, we are talking, we talked about. SubhanAllah. See, I don't know what that's like. Yeah, okay. Like, me personally, because like, like coming from, you know, Dalala and, and, and this guidance and not being Muslim to Islam, yeah. it makes it easy for me to talk about those things which are not Islam, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like the only way to actually get these parents to kind of wake up, but I'm not advocating for parents to, you know, uh, be exposed to any haram material. Yeah. I'm not saying anything like that. But I think there needs to be some sort of, maybe a documentary that they can watch where it's like realities of high school. 
yeah. realities of, you know, of these things. Um, to, to just go to, so that they're exposed and understand like, you know, there's, there's, there's fahsha, there's munka, there's, there's alcohol abuse, there's drug abuse, there's, there's hookup culture now where, you know, teens are just hooking up with each other so that they can be cool or so that they can, you know, um, gain, gain sexual experience. Yeah. Before they get fit in uh, and boost the body, exactly. Yeah. And then, then, then social media is kind of reinforcing that that, like, as a man, you have to be experienced to get uh, a woman, otherwise, you're not, you're not going to be able to keep her. And uh, the other way as well, like, as a woman, you have to be somewhat experienced so that the man does not get bored with you, and all of these things, like, subhanallah, subhanallah like, and it, and it totally goes against the, the known even psychologically backed uh, evidence that in the case that you are both virgins, you have a high likelihood of having that level of pair bonding uh, and, and gaining experience with each other that leads to a satisfaction in marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Like like when two, two virgins actually get married and they have a high likelihood of maintaining that marriage yes. according to the research. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I feel like parents need to have some sort of a wake-up call. Yeah. And I don't know if that's like an actual documentary that is produced to actually just give them an insight and you can blur all of the haram scenes or whatever. But just like if like, and me and you know, like if you just took a camera and walked through a, a, a BC high school, a Canadian high school during, during, you know, lunch, what would you see? Yeah, subhanallah. You would see drugs being exchanged. You might see people like hiding liquor in their lockers. Yeah. You might see people hooking up in the corner or you might see people like skipping class and going and doing God knows what else. And that's just on like a regular Tuesday lunchtime at high school. Yeah. Like maybe they need to talk to the guidance counselor at, at, this, at the high school. Like what do you experience? What are the problems you experience without telling me about the names of the people? Like what are the things that you are most commonly experiencing? You, they'd obviously admit to like, there's depression, anxiety, there's people that are experiencing drug abuse, alcohol abuse, people that are being sexually abused, you know, at home and they're bringing that to school. There's people that are, you know, engaging in promiscuous re relationships, people that are engaging with, you know, borderline, you know, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for, uh, predatory relationships with people that are older because they're not getting love in the home and yeah. all of these things. And like that's just a normal, you know, 2023 high school in Canada. Yeah. And I feel like parents that come from Afghanistan, come from Somalia, come from Turkey, wherever the case may be, they're just so un, so unaware that yeah. these things are going on. So it's like they send their kids to school and then when their kid either leaves Islam because they're exposed to all of these batal ideologies that like, you know, like everything came randomly, there's no creator, and then they leave Islam or they, they're, they're influenced by feminism and they're like, I don't know why I can't travel without a mahram, like I'm my own woman. Uh, or I don't know why my, you know, I, that my father has to give me away. I'm going to have my own relationship or you know, I don't know why I have to be submissive and obedient to a husband. I'd rather be submissive and obedient to a boss that doesn't care about me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or just liberalism in general. Like all religions are the same. They're, they all lead to God. They all are good. Like as long as you're, uh, you know, you, you don't harm people and you're a good person, you're going to heaven. SubhanAllah, like. I don't know how else we're supposed to wake these parents up, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Hello my friend. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? We're doing very well. Feel free to take anything my friend.